Motor Week is made possible by Rock Auto, Tire Rack, and Die Hard. This time on Motor Week 89, we test a convertible that's pure fun. Lisa Barrow tests the choppy waters of insurance reform. We finally test the Chrysler TC by Maserati. And Craig Singha shows us a Pontiac that stands the test of time. So come drive with us next. Motor Week 89, television's automotive magazine, with your host, John Davis. Well, hello and welcome to Motor Week 89. We're glad to have you with us. You know, there's nothing like a convertible to put the fun back in driving. Unfortunately, the trend towards basing convertibles on high-powered sports cars sometimes means you're too busy keeping it on the road in fast corners to enjoy the view. So we went looking for something a bit more sedate. We found it at Volkswagen, where they still make a convertible that puts fun at the forefront. For Volkswagen, 1989 is a milestone year. It has been 40 years since VW first began importing cars to America. But there is another event to be celebrated here. This 1989 Volkswagen Cabriolet represents the 40th anniversary of continuous convertible production for the US too. And in a lot of ways, the Cabriolet has more in common with the original Beetle than any other car VW makes today. The first Beetle was such a strange sight to behold that in our land of tail fins, it eventually became the ultimate chic to own. That is a good way to sum up the current Cabriolet too. It may not be low and sleek, but it sure is square. Yet there are few other non-exotic cars that get as many looks and wishful smiles as VW's Cabriolet. No wonder it remains one of the few bright spots in VW's otherwise dismal sales picture. At $15,485 to start, it's like the Beetle of yesterday, something of a bargain. Then there is simplicity. The Cabriolet is a far more sophisticated car than any Beetle, to be sure. Yet the no-nonsense approach that made VW famous still lives in the Cabriolet's top. First, there is the real glass rear window with electric defogger standard. The top itself is long and tall and manual in operation. While you do need some muscle to unlatch it from the windshield frame, it folds down quickly, revealing a massive roll bar that speaks volumes to safety. The top on our car was leak-proof and made of very high-quality materials with an underside lining for longer life. When you push the Cabriolet hard, you also notice something else about its convertible construction. The body experts at Carmen, who have made all of VW's convertibles, know how to take a top out and leave most of the structural rigidity in. There is some body flex to be sure, but less than in many other rag tops. Maneuverability is excellent, and you can hang the tail out easily with any quick release of the throttle. But the front end seems to know exactly where it's headed, leaving only the steering gear as a point of complaint. The feel is light and numb for our taste, an odd comment for any Volkswagen. Perhaps that's because the Cabriolet isn't like any other current Volkswagen. You see, this VW is the last of the venerable Rabbit line. The rest were replaced by the Golf in 1985. And that is where engine development seems to have ended on the Cabriolet. This is the same motor that powered the 1984 Rabbit GTI, all 90 horsepower of it. The 105 pound-feet of torque is the same too. Fortunately, VW had most of their engines equipped with fuel injection long before other manufacturers knew what it meant. Unfortunately, with 300 more pounds to pull around than any past Rabbit, things don't move fast with the Cabriolet. The best our car can manage from 0 to 60 was 12.5 seconds. That is slower than the Cabriolet we tested in 1985. Brakes are also the same as the last Rabbit GTI.
from 60 our stops average to a fine 120 feet. The front disc rear drum system is easy to modulate until you're almost stopped. Then there's a tendency for too much power boost and some lockup. However, even after repeated use, there was no noticeable fade. Inside, the cabriolet is unmistakably a VW. The cabin is spacious, even with the top up, and has a simplicity of purpose that makes you feel instantly at home. The old rabid dash is still convenient with controls that are efficiently low tech. The main gauges are large, clear, black-on-white dials with warning lights to tell you when you'd better take a look down at the secondary gauges on the console. Wide doors make entrance and egress easy, although you might bruise your knees on the fixed steering wheel. The seats are well bolstered and even with minimal adjustment, still able to provide a good driving position for virtually all heights. Top-up headroom is without fault. The radio is mounted at the top of the dash where we wish all cars had them with idiot-proof ventilation controls right below. Here, we're glad VW didn't change. On the other hand, we did expect the laughable rear seat release to be relocated from the trunk. One thing VW did change in 1988 was the front and rear appearance of the cabriolet. The grille was borrowed from the distinctive European GTI, complete with smaller inboard high beams. Bumpers were also covered with body color urethane, which gives the gracefully aging cabriolet the latest in one color look. However, Chrysler's less expensive LeBaron doesn't handle as well as the VW and has a less solid feel. The Chrysler does have slick styling and a fast turbo engine option. Chevrolet's Cavalier Z24 convertible has a higher base price, becomes standard with a V6 engine. It has modern styling, more interior and trunk room, and more body flex. And it is that solid construction that leads our list of hits for the VW Cabriolet, followed by the high quality top, great seats, and European front end styling. The Cabriolet misses with us because of its dated engine performance, awkward placement of gauges on the console, and a rear seat fold down control located in the trunk. But then the Beetle wasn't perfect either. In a way, classic Volkswagens are supposed to have idiosyncrasies. After all, normal is never chic. The 1989 Volkswagen Cabriolet is chic and more. It represents the last vestige of what started VW's popularity here four decades ago, to be out of and ahead of the automotive mainstream, a concept we hope future Volkswagens will find again.